The Small Business Show, episode 360 for Wednesday, December 29th, 2021. And welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show, the place where we are small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include napjitsu.com slash SBS, where you get 30% off your first purchase. We'll talk more about that in detail in a minute. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? I'm good. It's it's crazy this time of year. Yeah, it is always crazy. Trying to stuff the last of the <laughs> business in the, the yep. last couple of weeks and uh, make things happen so we can take a little time off with family and friends. Exactly. It's terrific. And I'm trying to figure out, we re, we're recording this about the middle of the month, and I'm, I'm trying to yeah. figure out if I need to do something different for like a 401k with one of my partnerships for this year. And if that's the yeah. case, or maybe it, maybe not a 401k, uh, like a SEP kind of thing. Cause we don't sure. have employees with that particular business. It's, you know, so we can do it. Yeah. Self-employment. The SEP, you know, the SEP is Im impacted. If you have any business that has employees, you got to be careful, right? You, yes. If you own any portion of another business that has employees, you're kind of limited on the SEP. Yeah, it's true. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm true. doing the same thing. I have, my wife is, is, uh, don't tell her this, but she's my employee. Right. <laughs> and uh, I really, I really work for her. However, uh, for the mo for one of our companies, um, she's employee and carries the healthcare and all that kind of stuff. And right. she, I, I have to fund her account before the end of the year. And then mine as the owner of the business, I can fund when you file your taxes, which probably won't be till October. October. Yeah. That's, yeah. and that's been my thing, yeah. but, but you have to have the account opened before the end oh, yeah. of the year. That's sort yeah, of the, yeah. the key. I already there. have it opened. Sure. Uh, you know, I, this is my third or fourth year we've done this, but it, it's an amazing thing. And if you're, if you can have a uh, solo 401k or a SEP IRA, the, the advantages are, Pretty amazing um, if you can fund it to the to the fullest if capacity. If you can fund it to the max, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And excuse me, you owe, you know I always look at it it's like wow, it's a big chunk of money, but it's either pay the IRS or pay yourself and then pay a little bit later, right? And uh, yeah, pay yourself so. in the future. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah. I, I think it's a great thing, and if you uh, if you haven't or you have the opportunity to set something like that up, it's really worth talking to your accountant and your financial planner. It is. Yeah. That's kind of what I've been dealing with. And, and my partners, because as you said, each partner's individual scenario with, you know, where they live and what, you know, what other interests they have and do they have employees there and this, that, and the other thing, like it all factors yes. in because we have to treat each other equally in this regard. Like that is one of the the mandates I think is you know, everybody has to be contributing the same percentage and the company or the company has to be contributing the same percentage, you know, for, for that. And it, it just gets, yeah, it's complicated, but if you, it, if you get it figured out, it can be really beneficial. It, yeah. I'm just trying Definitely. to, and, and, you know, for, I haven't been able to do it for ever because I've always had employees at one business or another, but yeah. now that I don't, yeah, I just have contractors. It's like, Oh, it's a whole new, you know, opportunity that That's you a whole new world. That's yeah, interesting. It's really I good. wonder, it's really this is a question I'm going to ask my accountant. Don't follow my advice other than to ask your accountant this. But if you had a business that, that had employees and you put that business, you, you had that business 100% owned by another business and you owned that business, but not the one that actually pays employees. <laughs> like, how does that work? There's, I, you know that there's some I, I, some loophole yeah. here, right? There, there, there are some some loopholes, but I'm not sure that's one, right? But because uh, they're pretty adamant about that employee thing. But there's definitely uh, companies that specialize in these types of yeah. plans, and uh, I, I, you definitely want to reach out and no, that, but those, like to me, sure. those are the questions because you're right. That I mean, that's a simple question yeah. that has probably already been uh, if that loophole ever existed it's probably already been plugged closed right yeah. but by asking that question i lead my accountant down the right path of saying oh no you, dude you can't do that if you wanted to do that what you'd have to do and now suddenly he's giving me information that that i did, otherwise didn't know how to ask for 
Yeah, right? that's a good point. So you I'm get the, the conversation going. I'm yeah. I'm totally fine floating what appear to be stupid, crazy ideas, especially to my accountant. Like, hey, what if we did this? Because sometimes there's a pause on the other end of the phone, and the accountant's like, you know, that might work. Yeah, you never know. Uh, yeah, You're right. But but a lot of times it's, <laughs> yes. yeah, nice try, but yeah. but here's what you'd have to do, and then. You can look at it and say, all right, is it worth whatever expense, headache, risk of doing, you know, scenario B that's actually still, you know, somewhat feasible versus, you know, my my simplified scenario A kind of thing. But yeah. Uh, and, and always remember, you know, your risk profile is probably very different from your accountant. So you get to make that final decision. Ultimately, you're going to pay if there's a fee or a fine or something happens. Hopefully uh, not jail time. Goes, hopefully not jail, uh, <laughs> of course. And so, yeah, so you have to listen to your accountant, but you, ultimately you have to make a decision because you're uh, you're you're ultimately responsible and, you know, got to look at, see what, uh, what makes sense for you. Yeah, well, that's it. Exactly. I, I always say it's good. I like having an accountant who is slight, like one or two notches more risk averse than me. Uh, Makes sense. I, I yep. don't want someone that is so far on the other side of that, that they can't even comprehend or aren't comfortable working with someone that says, okay, thank you for explaining these risks to me. I understand. I think this year I'm okay doing it this way versus that way. You know, that, that kind of thing. Cause there are, there are those scenarios where it's like, well, you know, you're, you're on a gray line here. Which side of it do you want to choose to be on? And sometimes I'll choose to be on the what, what I would call the safe side. And sometimes I'll choose to be on what I would call the profitable side. You know, and yeah. it's like it's hard to say how it would be interpreted in some of these things. And and you have to have I like to have an accountant that's OK with me making either decision, um, you know, within reason. Obviously, if it's yeah, if that's a right. crime being committed, I, yeah, I'm not yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in that. Well, at that point, hopefully your accountant would say, hey, Dave, I can't represent you. I can't anymore. represent <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had an accountant that was actually on the wrong side of that. It wasn't the case throughout our relationship, but it it morphed into this where I feel like I was being encouraged to commit crimes. Oh, that's not good. And it was like, no. okay, I need a new wrong account. Wrong risk now. profile. <laughs> wrong, yeah. We're, 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 I'm on the wrong side of this equation. I need to yeah. be the guy dragging us down, not lifting us up. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and the thing I'll, you know, last comment I'll make on this uh, solo 401k or SEP uh, IRIS, it's a little challenging if you try to set one up in the last two weeks of the year because there's a third entity involved in managing and creating this plan. Yes. Uh, you can do it, but you really kind of have to push and you're probably going to pay a little more in fees. I think my plan is like 300 bucks a year for them okay. to yeah. file the paperwork I, and do all that kind of stuff. I have these things set up. So I like that third, you're right. There is the third part, the, the part that's either the financial planner or just the, you know, the, the administrator of the plan. Yeah, there's another administrative company. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But I already have that relationship and and they know they're all like I've already been in touch with them too, but this relationship has existed for many years. So they know I'm a little crazy. They know I do things last minute, and they're totally fine with it. So it's yeah. and they're aware that you know the phone call might be coming. That it's like, hey, time yeah, to go. Want to do something? Yeah, yeah and they right. already yeah. sort of know. Like we've talked it all through. It's just, can I get approval from all of the entities? involved to say yes to this thing that we're doing. It's not even like we have to pick what it's going to be. It's, it's all sort of in place. It's just, can we flip the switch or not is yeah, really what we're waiting great. to decide. Yeah, it's good. That's good. That's, that's good. great. That's good. So, Hey, hey you know, we, we don't tell talk me about what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We don't talk about the news very much on this show, but I did just see this morning that the producer price index rose to 9.6% year over year, which is the largest increase in history. Uh, which, of course, what that means is inflation is rampant. Yeah. And uh, we talked about inflation and managing it in your business and prices a, a little bit back in October in episode 351 that you might want to go listen to. But yeah. uh, uh, I think that it's it would behoove us to talk <laughs> about it a little more today. I don't disagree at all. The, the, there's two things I want to do. I want to talk about that because I think there's a lot to, to dissect here and a lot to learn for me and hopefully for people that are listening. Uh, the other thing that I want to do, and I'd love to do it right now if that works for you, Shannon, is talk about our sponsor for this episode. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, 
72% of Americans report being tired every day. But when was the last time any of us took a nap? For me, it was today. That's because a power nap helps me reset my body and my brain, unlocks all the energy I need. And if you want to empower your power nap, let our sponsor Nap Jitsu help. Nap Jitsu's natural supplements were made by people who know how it feels to be tired and busy. Well, we like to be productive in the nap. The power nap is key to productivity here. And that's because Nap Jitsu's patent pending formulas have natural ingredients like B vitamins, guarana and ginseng to help give you a boost of energy without that crash later. Each Nap Jitsu product provides brain boosting nootropics to unlock steady energy right when you need it. The result, your peak performance all day long, your peak productivity all day long. And these supplements, they've sent us some and we've gotten to experiment with it. They work and they're packaged into small packets so you can take them wherever and whenever you might need that little energy boost. It's fantastic. It really, it, they've done a fantastic thing here. And remember, the smart rest more, the wise rest better. And for a limited time, you can receive 30% off your first purchase when you go to napjitsu.com slash SBS. Go to napjitsu.com slash SBS for 30% off your first purchase today. That's napjitsu.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Napjitsu for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. Managing inflation and how to raise our prices, because I think that's going to be part of it, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I, well, maybe you have to analyze okay. your business, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Fair. You know, uh, and maybe one of the first questions uh, y you have to ask yourself is, do you need to raise your prices? You know, mm. what are your what's your profit margin, and can you absorb this uh, it, two ways? One... If your competitors are not raising their prices or, you know, maybe you're going to have to sit tight for a while and see yeah. what happens in your market. Or two, if your competitors are raising your prices, maybe it gives you a competitive advantage because you're so darn efficient after listening to the small business show for so many years that you've learned all these tricks to, you know, keep your expenses down and all that kind of stuff. Well, that, so, that's the key is if you can systematize things, uh, yeah, it, it, and and get yourself to a point where you've increased your margins. Well, if other things are decreasing your margins, maybe you still stay ahead of the game. Yeah, you could. And you know, looking at costs, like I, I think that's a great place to start and, and ask yourself: Are there other costs we could cut right now uh, to help keep us from having to raise our prices? You know, if if your supply chain issues and your uh, raw materials cost or your, you know, product costs are up 5% or whatever. Is there someplace else, you know, don't just look to the products, look at your entire organization. And then that ask yourself, we've talked about this a lot. How good is your data? You know, uh, just because you're reading about what's going on with inflation and this and hearing us talk about it, is it impacting your business yet? Really look at your purchasing and like I said, your raw material cost. Um, and are you capturing the right data? You know, garbage in, garbage out. You, yeah. you need to make sure you've got those systems in place, your accounting package we've been talking a lot about lately, and be able to track what's going on before you can even make a decision. You know, what are your shipping costs? I mean, shipping costs are through the roof, um, especially if you're shipping from Asia. The cost of containers is, you know, it used to be three, four $4,000, and now it can be upwards of $20,000 for uh uh, you know, some of the shipping costs and just even small items, every FedEx, UPS, USPS, all shipping costs are up. So maybe you can't offer free shipping, but you can offer, you know, some kind of discounted shipping. So ask yourself, you know, look inward first, right? And yeah, well, before you, uh, that's yeah. a, that's a great way of saying it. Look inward because there's so much hype out there yeah. and, and it's, and, and it's fueled by, by, by truth, right? Like sure, prices sure. are going up. Like you said, shipping prices are going up, but just the f because two guys on a podcast both say that shipping prices are going up doesn't mean that your shipping prices are going up. Correct. Or it doesn't tell you how much your shipping prices are going up, right? You, you need to look inward to figure out, okay, there are these macro trends and, and even some less macro, I'm not going to call them micro trends, but you know, there's, there's these things that are affecting different people and different businesses in different ways. 
And OK, like, but how are they actually affecting you? And, yeah. you know, and, don't buy into the hype. I, yeah, That's right. That's right. You know, you really have to look in, inward and see, OK, and what's what's going on with your customer base? I mean, when I went through this kind of thing before, as shipping prices just kept going up, 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 up. And I just decided, you know what? I'm over it. I'm not going to do this free shipping thing anymore. And we, I, I, I would be glad to lower my, my sale price to help compensate or offset shipping. But with shipping just continually going up, I'm not going to get stuck constantly having to offer that free shipping and absorbing all those uh, expenses. And it's worked out great. Um, you know, I, I control the, the sale price, but the shipping cost for me in, in my particular uh, vertical market yep. is, is separate. And the customer can make a decision. They can go the slow route and it's inexpensive or they can pay more, but you know, um, so yeah, that, it's really good to look inside. Um, and then also idea of do you have to raise your prices you you cut out for a second there and i think you oh. didn't just cut out for me i think it cut out for everybody okay. so it, you, you asked some here. question okay. about do you have to raise your prices is, is that yeah, what, ask yeah. yourself then before you get to that point we're not there yet I, I i think there's some other things you can do and one of the first things you can do is to increase the perceived value of your product or service and, and what i mean by that are there things that you can add and bundle together. So even though you, you, you're going to increase the price, you've added something that adds value to where the customer's perception is not going to be like, well, they raised the price and they didn't give me anything. You know, can you, uh, add a longer warranty? Can you give them more support? You know, uh, can you gift wrap? Can you personalize things? Bundling things is a great way to take the focus off of a single item price that you may have to adjust and need some flexibility with. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I think is, can, can you change your product and offer it at a premium? Um, you see brands doing this all the time where, oh, you know, this product is made out of a little nicer fabric and, you know, this color is a little different and this kind of stuff. Can you offer different levels of, of pricing? Um, and, you know, to, to get that customer in the door, it's like, okay, well, here's this basic thing. But if I really go up, you know, want to go here, I'm going to pay a little bit, you know, more um, and different options. Like a, a great example is you, you you have a customer looking for a pair. If you're in the shoe business, sure, you look for a pair of shoes. Well, I, my shoe size is probably maybe the most popular shoe size. And I'm looking like, great. Oh, these are only, you know, 75 bucks. But that's for like a size seven. Well, when I go to size 10, it bumps up 10 bucks or oh, 20 really? bucks. So oh, my, yeah. my size 13 feet cost more. Of course they do. There's more raw materials involved. That we, Yes, you would think that. But maybe based on popularity as well. Oh. Maybe 13 is a good deal. Maybe you start at 13 because it's, you know, there's not that many freaks out there like you. <laughs> have a size 13 shoe. None so, taken, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, so can you adjust, uh, you know, things like that? And what you're also doing is is when you always have that low priced option, you're anchoring the customer's expectation, right? They're going to see that lower price first. Oh, it's 50 bucks. But to get what they really want, they're going to have to do a little upgrade, right? Oh. It's like when you, you go to the movies and you buy the popcorn and you know, whether the small is, I don't know, five bucks. And they say, well, do you want the medium? It's only five seventy five, And, you know, the large is only six fifty. So here you're... And you get free uh, refills with the large yeah, as though you're exactly. going to eat more than a yes. full bucket of large popcorn. Yeah, whoever came up to that one is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're meeting the expert expectation that the price is the same yes. or lower. Right. And uh, is met. But just for a little bit more, they get what they want. And that could help you because your cost may not be any more at all on that other option. And I, uh, you know, I would argue the cost of that added little scoop of popcorn is nothing. Um, the nominal, you know, the nominal cost. Uh, so ask yourself that. I like that. Inside. I like that idea that meat, meat price. You don't want to bait and switch people, right? No, no, no. Meat, of course meat, not. Meat price expectations, but, but then offer. Give them options. Yeah. An if option. A value add, an apparent value add, let's call it that. Like, yeah. you know, like we were saying the, the you know, the, the free refills on the popcorn, if it costs, if if it costs anything in raw materials, it's it's negligible. I would yes. think. <laughs> That's right. You know, unless well, unless it, you have the entire theater of people 
in uh, working together and they buy one popcorn and then you know, just keep sending it around. Now, I think with COVID, that's probably not going to happen anyway. But uh, right. but, you know, you could work the system that way and that that might work out. But otherwise, not, you know, you, you have very little, very little downside risk with uh, that's right. with that as a movie theater owner. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. And so there's all, there's all kind of, I mean, go, go search Amazon to buy, uh, like, let's say you want an SLR camera, you know, a, sure. a big camera with the removable lenses and everything. It's almost impossible just to buy the camera because there's a million different bundles. There's, you know, lighting and stands and tripods and covers and lenses. And they do that for a reason. So it, well, two things, one, it makes it hard to compare, uh, other vendors oh, selling that same product. Right. And and two, the margin, the profit margin on the camera is very slim, but right. the profit margin on everything else is very high. So instead of just driving the price down and trying to sell this, everybody sells this commodity camera for a thousand bucks. Well, for $12.99, you get all these extra little items and the all of the profit may be in those little extra items. The camera is just the teaser that nobody makes any money on. So it's, I mean, it's why I have to buy a bundle if I'm ever buying an Xbox, if you've ever done that. Same of kind course, of thing. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know they, who makes all the money on the Xbox? Sony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, or whoever makes it. Microsoft. I think it's Microsoft, it. right? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, they make that Oh, one. yeah. So they, it's it's a huge point. margin on for them. Yeah. Yeah. For them. But they invented it, right? So they get it. Right. Well, they uh, did the R&D. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they did all the R&D. <laughs> so yeah, so they get it. So think about that bundling and how we could, you know, how you can adjust it and, and change it and get away from just having that that if you're in the product business, how to get that out of there. And the same with, if you're in the service business, if you're going out to do HVAC work, well, maybe your price has to go up a little bit, but you include a free cleaning or we'll change your filter at the same time we're there when we're doing a repair. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know that business at all, but there's some things you can add. Number one, it does make it a little harder to compare with the average Joe uh, selling something else, some, you know, commodity type items. So you want to do that value add. It can work out great. Yeah. Well, oh, it makes sense. Yeah. I like yeah. It. So a few more things. If you it, here's the if you must raise your prices, I think the first thing is you, you have to be transparent about it. Everybody knows what's going on. People see it. You go to buy meat in the store and it's like, holy smokes, you know, you build, buy gas at your yeah, oh. fill up your car. It's ridiculous. Yeah, We started so, paying California prices for gas. We had to pay yeah, four bucks yeah. a gallon the other day here. Yeah. 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 It's usually it's up around five here. Wow. Every, just about everywhere. But yeah, that's it's ridiculous. crazy. Oh, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so everybody knows they all have an idea. So talk about it. Talk about it. Post it. Talk about pricing on your website, on your blog. Your salespeople should maybe, hey, you know, we're we're getting ready. Things are getting a little more expensive. Maybe you have to. You, you have repeat customers. Maybe there's got to be a note inside the your packaging about how we're we're working really hard to keep prices down, but we do expect some, you know, th this coming. You want to you know, lead them down, um, manage their expectations. So when they start to see prices increase, they know, you know, what's going on. Um, and don't apologize. It's not your fault. It's just the way things are. Just be open about the situation and, and your customers will respect you for it and they'll be ready. Uh, and so will your employees, they'll know how to talk about it more, right? You have to say, Hey, you know, we're talking about inflation, things are going up, costs of this. Um, and you know, that's interesting. Thing, I want to I want to yeah. pick at that a little bit. That, that don't apologize. I think I would, I, I I would naturally. You've been you've been in the products business way more than me. Um, so I, I'm I'm eager to hear your thoughts on this. But I would have the way I would have presented it to a customer is, you know, I, I'm I'm sorry that we're all in a position that we have to do this, but I, I de it definitely would have included an "I'm sorry" somewhere in there. Not that it's our fault, which is you know, but it's to soften the blow. I'm sorry that you know we're in a position where, as I'm sure you know, prices are going up, and and we're not immune to that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So my take on it is, when you apologize, you're taking responsibility. Yeah. And so what I would phrase it as is, you know, it's unfortunate Ooh. that we are all in this together. You know, I went to the store and tried to buy a ribeye and it was 30 bucks, you know, or whatever. Use some uh, anecdotal, uh, you know, examples of it. Like we just did talking about meat, talking about gas. It's like, yeah, wow. You know, I went to fill my car up and it was five bucks a gallon. And then you get, you're on the same side of the table with that customer. Yeah. Go, I know, it's ridiculous. No, you know, that's, da, 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 that's da. brilliant. That's, that's what I would, that's why I wanted to pick at this a little bit yeah. because that saying it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It communicates the same. It, yeah. That's yeah. really what I'm trying to say with, I'm sorry yeah. is 
it's unfortunate acknowledging it's unfortunate. that this this is just a thing and we're yeah. all in this together the key um, thing just like just what you said you're acknowledging it and you're trying to have empathy yes. right with with your yes. buyer your customer that has to spend more money for you and you're you want the that empathy and that connection you have is should keep your buyer buying coming back you know um, well that's the reason to do it that's right yeah, i mean yeah, yeah yeah for sure and and it i would argue here it's a good time to bring this up if your customers are you know you, you may have some customers that leave but you know what if your customers or those customers are focused solely on price i would argue they're not your primary customer and you should go back and listen to episode 347 from september 29th where we talked all about how to identify your primary customer and you 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 know I really would encourage you to focus on getting away from those customers that are only focused on price. They're not going to help build your business. They're just going to grind you up. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. yeah, for sure. A few more. Yeah. A few more things, you know, uh, I'm not a big fan of this, but this happens all the time. Adjusting quantity and sizing, you know, can you, can you, uh, offer a little bit less? Can you, uh, you know, a little smaller size or less of quantity, you know, that's an option. Um, and another one thing that's I think really important to do is offer less discounts and coupons. Right? If your business is discount and coupon driven, which so many e-commerce companies are, um, and that's a whole other show where we can see whether that's a good idea or not. You know, and maybe you you offer a twenty five percent discount on Black or Black Friday or Cyber Monday or whatever. Yeah. Maybe you can't do that this year. Maybe it's fifteen or twenty percent. Um, you still get that you know bump like oh yeah they're going to give me this this off but um you know just just decrease them a little bit and and then maybe you give that higher discount if they bundle or uh you know get over a certain dollar amount so you can start thinking about increasing your average order size right when i first started this handbag experiment to see if i could do it you know i was selling 100 dollar handbags and now you know i sell 1000 and 2000 dollar handbags and it's the same amount of work but I make way more money, but I didn't know how to sell a thousand dollar or $2,000 handbag back then. Right. But as you work your way through and you learn and here, maybe you can tweak your systems over time to get to that customer that wants to spend more money with you instead of just buying the $25 item, they, they get them to spend a hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, so a lot of places out here in California are adding fees to their orders. I'm not a fan of that either, but it is happening. Um, and what, like what kind of a fee are you seeing? What's well, what do they call it? What do they name it? Yeah. Well, like in San Francisco, if you go to a restaurant, there's a uh, they call it like a some sort of um, basic living expense or some oh. kind of. OK, so they're <laughs> pretty, gonna, out, pretty transparent yeah, about what but, this is. Yeah. 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 Okay. And they add like a certain thing. And in some restaurants, I've noticed that when they hand you the credit card machine to pay and you, you go to do the tip that the default I've been seeing more and more is 25% yes. the default tip amount. Yes. And I was like, oh, wait, I used to tip. I mean, I thought I was a decent tipper at 20%, you know, so you have to go out of your way to go other 20% and do it. So there's lots of tricks they're doing to, you know, and that's those are just a couple of restaurant yeah. examples. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and a few more, a couple items. If you're going to increase, you might consider increasing the prices and stages as you talk about uh, it to your customers and transparency. Hey, we you know we went up here a little bit. We're going to try to keep it down, but we may be going up a little bit more. Um, or maybe you only increase pricing for new customers, right? Can you reward your existing? If you have a business that yeah. you have lots of repeat customers. No, that's a great way to do it. I, yeah. I like that idea of like, okay, well, and, and the nice part is you can get some credit for that from your existing yeah. customers, right? You can yeah. let them know, Hey, just in case you see this out there, you know, we have raised our prices, you know, but you're still, you know, 20% under where we are and we're going to keep you there for at least a year Next. or whatever, yeah, whatever it is, whatever yeah. period of time you can afford, but committing yeah. to that really that. like that, then they say, oh, okay. And they, you know, if you're in a, you know, like us with, with ads, we do this all the time. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. the price has gone up. But you've been here for a year. That's cool. Yeah, it, that's it, smart. It, we'll keep your rate for, you know, we're able to keep your rate for 2022. We're happy to tell you we're able to keep your rate for 2022. But, you know, that that opens the door for, okay, well, 2023. Or if you don't renew into 2022 and then, you know, July comes around and you say, hey, I want back on board. Well, okay, our, our 2022 rates are X. Well, what happened to my old rate? 
well, you you abandoned that deal. <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. no longer on the table. Is, is right. you find a nice way of saying it, but but the, you know they they'll ask because they should ask. You would ask yeah. too. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. So lots of you know ways to 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 do this. Um, the the last thing I would say is kind of ties into this kind of don't panic, don't make fear based decisions yeah. that we always talk about, and having good data is. Don't just rush out and do across the board price increases for everything you sell, because it, I, I guarantee you, it's not everything isn't just going up. You need to find out where you're being impacted, what materials, which products, and maybe you don't want to raise the prices on the products you have that don't sell very much anyway, right? right. Because maybe you have those in stock and you paid the old price. Oh well, don't don't adjust that or this size or that item. But boy, these are these things move quick, and man, the cost has gone up, or shipping has gone up. So these we have to adjust. So you need to look at it and analyze it, uh, and and make decisions about what's going to have the most impact. I think you'll find uh, better results that way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think it's great. You yeah. know that it was 2015 that we interviewed Brian Friss, October of 2015, <laughs> and he said, don't make fear-based decisions. I got, oh, that guy lunch again. <laughs> I, I, I'll say, man, I, like I was just looking it up to put it in the show notes. It's like, seriously? Like that? Yeah, he definitely wins the show notes uh, award oh, <laughs> because yeah. we always mention that. Always, yeah. always. Yeah. It's almost very, like he, soon we will stop crediting him with it. We will uh, we will adopt it and make it our own. <laughs> we need to have him back on the show. I'm going to push that. that next year. And yeah, see what, that would be what good. He's, I know his business has changed a lot like all of ours have done. Sure. To, you know, to, yeah. to, to survive and thrive. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and if you have, you know, ways that you've managed dealing with inflation or other tricks and tips that, you know, you'd like to share with us so we could share it with everybody else, um, feedback at businessshow.co, or you can share it with the small business group that we have up on Facebook, businessshow.co slash Facebook. We would absolutely love to hear from you. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah. should we say happy new year? Because this is going to be out on this the- This is it. Yeah. Happy 29th. new year, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Keep happy living that charmed life. Happy new year, Shannon. Happy New Year, Dave.